Hey guys, today I'll show you a fantasy thriller TV series named Hotel Del Luna. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The drama begins with a shot of Hotel Del Luna, an establishment that serves as a resting place for wandering souls. The hotel's president is named Wall. She was bound here 1300 years ago to atone for her sins by a deity who is a human life and death guider. Subsequently, this death guiding deity made her the proprietor of the guest house, now known as Hotel Del Luna. Since then, her life has been intertwined with the moon tree, neither alive nor dead, her presence as constant as a shadow. Over these 1,300 years, she has remained in the hotel and expanded her team to include a bartender, housekeeper, receptionist, and a general manager, a team that is comprised of spirits, except for the human general manager. This hotel operates exclusively for the souls who cannot leave. It provides top-notch services to these wandering spirits. Recently, Hotel Del Luna is about to welcome its 99th general manager, Chan, whom Wall took under her wing 21 years ago in return for saving his father's life. In 1998, Chan's father, while fleeing from the police for theft, fell down a staircase and slipped into a coma. Unaware of his condition, his soul continued to flee, accidentally stumbling into Hotel Del Luna. His wandering spirit found its way to the moon tree and attempted to pick a flower as a birthday gift for his son, only to be caught by Wall. Chan's father begged for mercy, explaining that he only wanted to give the flower to his son as a birthday present. Wall was incredulous, as the moon tree had never bloomed before, but she took this as a divine sign. She decided to spare him on the condition that he would bring Chan to her after 20 years. To save his own life, his father had no choice but to agree. The deal was struck, and Wall returned his spirit to his body. However, compared to Wall's expectations for Chan, father and son have always wanted to keep their distance from her and Hotel Del Luna. To avoid the agreement, Chan's father took him wandering through various countries, forbidding him from returning to Korea for 20 years. Now, in the 21st year, the time of the agreement has passed, and Chan has come back to Seoul, ready to start work at a high-end hotel. But what is meant to be will always find a way. After walking out from an interview at a hotel, Chan received a pot of evening primroses, the birthday gift Wall sends him every year. However, this time there was an addition, a card inviting him to join the staff of Hotel Del Luna. Though curious about the hotel, Chan remembered his father's warnings and with a heavy heart tossed the evening primroses and the invitation card into a subway station trash can. It wasn't long before he saw Wall on the subway, cradling a pot of evening primroses. He recognized her immediately as the dreadful woman his father had warned him about. Nevertheless, he bravely sat opposite Wall and declined her invitation. Wall didn't seem surprised. Instead, she gave Chan a peculiar gift. She opened his third eye, enabling him to see the ghosts. After reminding him that he could leave, a panicked Chan bolted from the subway, overtaken by a sudden fear. He hurried back to his friend's house to pack his bags and plan to leave the area. But before he could hail a cab, he encountered a woman ghost without eyes, frightening him so much that he ran like a broken Tesla bike. No matter how fast he ran, the ghostly woman always appeared in front of him until Chan fell to the ground in fear. All of this was witnessed by Wall, who covered his mouth at the critical moment and distracted the female ghost with a thrown stone, a classic beauty-saving-the-hero scene. After dealing with the trouble, Wall suggested they go for a meal. The stubborn Chan, however, refused to eat and asked why he could see ghosts. Wall suggested he come to Hotel Del Luna, which puzzled Chan. Wall was clearly human, so why did she live in a hotel full of wandering spirits? Her expression changed slightly at the question. She simply stated that she wasn't dead, just unable to die, and that's how she had existed thus far. Now Chan wished that Wall would no longer appear before him. However, it was clear that Wall disregarded his request. After the meal, she asked Chan to buy bubble tea. Right after he left, a homeless man appeared before Wool, blaming her as he viciously stabbed her with a steel rod. It turns out the man was the mayor of the city, who had killed a female police officer investigating evidence against him and dumped her body in the river. The female officer, now a water ghost, came to Hotel Del Luna and shared her grudge with Wall. With a bag of diamonds, she convinced the money-driven Wall to help expose the mayor's misdeeds. During an award ceremony, Wall appeared with a gun. Everyone but the mayor could not see her. She aimed the gun at him, firing a bullet filled with resentment into his body. The mayor could suddenly see the ghost of the female officer. Terrified, he publicly confessed to arranging the murder of the female officer. Back to the present, the man, who reaped what he sowed, blamed Wall for his downfall, leading to his crazed action. 
The scene also terrified the returning Chan. He watched, not knowing what to do, as Wall sat collapsed on the ground. But Wall offered him the chance to run away. After considering it, Chan took off. But when Wall thought he had escaped, Chan returned moments later, pulling a flatbed cart, ready to take Wall to the hospital or back to the hotel. However, after seeing his kindness, Wall stood up as if nothing had happened and pulled out the steel rod. Realizing what was happening, Chan turned to leave, but Wall told him he could no longer run away. She threatened to kill him if he tried to escape again. Unharmed, Wall plunged the steel rod into the homeless man, who instantly turned to ash. The sight of Wool killing someone frightened Chan, who ran miles away before he could stop to catch his breath. Just as he stopped, a hand reached out from the pile of ashes and grabbed his shoe, startling him to wet his pants even more. The slowly approaching Wall informed him that the homeless man was a resentful ghost, leaving Chan so scared that he could barely speak. To get Chan a pair of clean shoes, Wall took him to the department store and then pressured him into buying a style she fancied. But Chan once again turned down the offer to work at the hotel. Wall explained to him that after death, people cross the Boundary River to another world, but some spirits miss this path and linger in the living world. The existence of Hotel Del Luna is to gather these lost souls and send them off to the underworld. Hearing this, Chan still refused to go to Hotel Del Luna and retorted by asking if Wall, who had threatened to kill him, was also a vengeful spirit. This soured Wool's mood immediately, but she simply warned Chan about the female ghost nearby and then left. Back at the hotel, Wall went straight to the courtyard. Looking at the barren moon tree, she couldn't help but think of Chan's sarcasm, which stung her a bit. Luckily, the spirit of a tiger appeared at the hotel entrance just in time, diverting her attention. Unexpectedly, when she went to greet this special guest, the tiger left straight away, leaving Wall quite upset and even venting her anger on the receptionist. Wall's temper was notorious among the hotel staff. After Wall left, Chan realized that the eyeless female ghost was still following him, which caused him quite a headache. He also felt a bit guilty for calling Wall a vengeful ghost. But for him, sealing his third eye was the most pressing matter. So the next morning, he went to Hotel Del Luna following the address on the invitation card. As soon as he entered, he was startled by the sudden appearance of the receptionist. Under the guidance of the receptionist and manager No, he made his way to Wall's office. Before meeting her, he learned from the manager that Wall had been at the hotel for 30 years and that Chan was about to take over the position, which made him quite nervous. He turned to run away, but Wall had already seen him. With no choice, he had to negotiate with Wall. She told him that the hotel was meant to heal spirits and help them peacefully move on, and that a human's help was needed for tax filings, health permit declarations, and other matters. Knowing that, Chan presented his bank book to Wall, proposing to return her 20 years of foster care with interest in exchange for his freedom. Wall took the bank book but did not agree to the deal. Unaware of this, Chan mistakenly thought the deal was done and happily decided to leave on his own. But before he could descend the stairs, he was scared back into the office by the appearance of a ghost. Helpless, he could only follow Wall out of the hotel to accompany her for a meal. During a meal at the restaurant, he once again took the opportunity to decline the job offer at the hotel, stating that he would adapt to a life of seeing ghosts. Wall sneered at this. She extinguished a candle with a flick and challenged Chan to retrieve his coffee without spilling a drop amid the room full of ghosts. If he succeeded, she would let him go. Chan managed to carry the coffee through the ghosts and successfully deliver it to Wall, who left in a huff. Because of that, Chan chose to work for another hotel where he passed the interview previously. But during his work, he still couldn't get used to seeing ghosts and even jumped into a swimming pool to avoid the eyeless female ghost, much to the amusement of Wall. She came there to take him to visit a company chairman who was recuperating at home due to constant nightmares. It turns out, the fierce tiger statue at the entrance of Hotel Del Luna was brought back by the chairman from a trip to Korea. Besides the tiger, there was also a famous mountain painting. After the tiger's death, its spirit haunted the chairman's dreams. Upon their arrival at the chairman's home, Wall barged into his bedroom, embarrassing Chan. However, the chairman didn't mind and even engaged in a conversation about the mountain painting and the tiger specimen in the exhibition hall. Wall suggested that the tiger should be returned, but the chairman believed that the specimen, now a symbol of exchange, was not something he could simply destroy or return. 
Just then, all the glass in the chairman's bedroom shattered, signifying an outburst from the tiger's spirit, which troubled Chan about the chairman's safety. After leaving the chairman's residence, Wall instructed Chan to claim the mountain painting, but he mistook her for a swindler and righteously refused the command, storming back home. However, as soon as he reached his doorstep, he encountered the ghost of Manager No, who encouraged him to explore the hotel's value, a secret world unknown to others. After that, Manager No came to the hotel, revealing that he would soon be taking the path to the afterlife as a guest at the hotel. Despite Wall's usual cold demeanor, she was visibly sad to send off her subordinate. Manager No's words gave Chan food for thought. He went to see the chairman, but found the painting already taken by Wall. It turned out that Wall's main purpose for wanting the painting was to provide the tiger with a resting place. Although it couldn't return home, it could revisit the mountain within the painting. Having understood these key points, Chan's fear of the hotel and spirits diminished. He even delivered the eyeless female ghost to the hotel and sincerely sent an apology text to Wool. But this didn't mean he was completely free from his fear of ghosts. While working at the hotel, he accidentally encountered a vengeful ghost and was chased all the way to the swimming pool. Fortunately, Wall received his text message in time and rushed to his rescue, then brought the unconscious Chan back to the hotel. As the hotel reached its operating hours, the grandiose lobby lit up brilliantly, with everyone at their posts doing their utmost to provide top-notch service to the guests. Chan began to see the Hotel Del Luna in a new light. After Wall brought Chan back to the hotel, she hid away in the courtyard, gazing at the moon tree that was intimately connected to her life, reminiscing about a millennium ago. She recalled her past with her friend Yu from her rebel gang, robbing the princess of the kingdom. As they were about to make their escape, the captain of the guard, Go, appeared and fought with Yu. Seeing Yu overpowered, Wall shot an arrow at Go and blew a whistle to signal retreat. Go realized someone was up high and pursued Wall, who he then knocked off her horse and removed her veil, becoming captivated by her beauty. This meeting laid the groundwork for their complicated future relationship. While Wall was lost in her memories, the death-guiding deity who bound her to this place appeared. They talked about the moon tree and its bond with Wall. The deity urged Wall to let the tree bloom and grow leaves, to let her own life flow once again. But Wall outright refused. Seeing such defiance, the deity felt a pang of compassion. She quietly induced a flower from the moon tree to bloom and placed it in Chan's heart, allowing him to dream of Wool's past to unravel the knots in her heart. Leaving the courtyard, Wall then went to the lobby. The Hotel Del Luna at night seemed like a normal hotel, bustling with spirits, a sight that astonished Chan. Wall then took Chan to see the hotel's rooms, the beach, and the rooftop, convincing him that the hotel vistas his father described did exist. But soon, Wall told him that everything there, including herself, did not exist in reality. Wall once again proposed that he stay here, and this time Chan agreed, on the condition that Wall provide him with a normal salary and not interfere with his freedom of dress. Wall agreed with a smile. Watching her smile, Chan remembered the smiling Wool he had seen in his dreams. After accepting his new role at the Hotel Del Luna, Chan stepped into his position with enthusiasm. At the front desk, he met several of the hotel's permanent staff members. While the receptionist was about to strike up a conversation with Chan about Wall, the housekeeper interrupted them and sent Chan off to finish his shift. Although curious about Wall, Chan obediently returned to his friend's house. That night, he dreamed of Wall and Go enjoying drinks and a chat by the river. However, before the dream could conclude, Wall called him, tasking Chan with selling the mountain painting to fund a new car for her, a request that nearly drove him to frustration. In response, Chan decided to give Wall a bit of trouble by bringing a ghost he encountered on the street named Yuna back to the hotel. Wool, initially inclined to banish the spirit, changed her tune upon learning that Yuna was the only daughter of a wealthy family. She agreed to help recover Yuna's body, which was possessed by a troublemaking spirit. Following Yuna's guidance, Wall and Chan arrived at her home and encountered the troublemaking spirit, who was inhabiting Yuna's body. The two split up. Chan pursued the possessed girl, while Wall, with Yuna's help, obtained a necklace, a personal item of the troublemaking spirits that harbored a grudge strong enough to expel Yuna's spirit. Previously, the troublemaking spirit, who came from a poor family, had bought an expensive necklace and was mocked by the wealthy Yuna. A struggle ensued when Yuna snatched the necklace away, and during a confrontation on an overpass, Yuna accidentally pushed her to her death. 
Wall used this incident to broker a deal with Yuna's parents, offering them two options, either to allow Yuna to atone for her actions by serving a sentence or pay to silence Wool and destroy the incriminating necklace. Without hesitation, Yuna's parents chose the latter, but Wool warned them that their decision would effectively kill Yuna's spirit. When they burned the necklace, Yuna's spirit vanished. Later, Wool appeared before the troublemaking spirit, advising her to continue living under Yuna's identity. It would be difficult, but she'd be alive. Watching this unfold, Chan couldn't help but feel a twinge of pity for Wool, who was trapped in the hotel by the death-guiding deity. To add to her troubles, Wall received a notification that her new car order had been canceled. Her mood exploded like a lit keg of gunpowder, leaving Chan trembling. To soothe her, he fetched her favorite champagne and delivered it to her room. However, Wall wasn't there. While waiting, Chan perused the photos of Wool from various eras on the walls and spotted a painting of the Moon Tree. His clever deduction led him straight to the courtyard where the Moon Tree was planted, and there he found Wool. He began discussing his dream with her and inquired if Go was the person she had been waiting for a thousand years. His question shocked Wool, who demanded to know how he could dream of such things. Chan was clueless. All he knew was that Wool was gradually filling his nights and dreams. Chan gently touched the moon tree, and to his surprise, the once barren tree instantly sprouted lush green leaves. Witnessing this, Wall was reminded of what the death-guiding deity had mentioned about allowing the moon tree to grow leaves and bloom. This realization made her consider that Chan might be a special human being in her life. To understand Chan's dreams, she wanted to force him to sleep and experience them, but she eventually abandoned the idea and went to her room to drink instead. Chan always felt a certain destiny with Wool, speculating that he might be the reincarnation of Go with memories from a previous life. When Wall placed her hand on his chest and told him she felt nothing for him, she implied that if he were Go's reincarnation, she would have felt something different. But Chan refused to give up, continuously bringing up the person Wall liked, which annoyed her to the point of punishing him by making him receive ghost guests. After welcoming the first guest in the lobby, Chan was so frightened he could hardly speak, but with the help of the receptionist, he managed to check in the guest. Learning that a group of ghost guests was preparing to stay at the hotel, Chan hid in the bar to chat with the bartender. Ghosts who leave the hotel without regrets would offer spiritual energy as payment. The fewer regrets, the more energy, which nourishes the flowers in the hotel's courtyard, causing them to bloom beautifully. The death-guiding deity would regularly harvest these flowers to give to ghosts on their way to the afterlife. Through the bartender, Chan learned that Wall often exploited helping ghosts resolve their regrets to make money for her lavish lifestyle, which he found baffling. After his shift, he encountered the deity on the subway, holding a basket of flowers. She entrusted him with the care of the moon tree, essentially Wall, and told him to seek her at the pharmacy using the address on her card if needed. After the deity vanished, Chan couldn't help but chase after her out of the subway, only to find an elderly man with flowers about to board the Grim Reaper's vehicle to the afterlife, with a loyal dog following behind. Upon seeing this, Chan approached the old man. It turns out, after the man's death, the dog had stayed by his side, faithfully guarding his owner despite the deity opening the room door for him. Chan remembered the bartender mentioning that Deity collects flowers to distribute to departing ghosts, leading him to realize that the elderly person who gave him the card was the Deity herself. After returning from the subway station, Chan went back to his room and fell into a deep sleep. Unexpectedly, his friend came back and startled him awake. To his surprise, the eyeless female ghost had followed his friend home. This really gave Chan quite a shock. Meanwhile, Wall, who had been angered by Chan, stayed in the courtyard gazing at the moon tree. She reminisced about the time Go had saved her from the kingdom and the connection with her friend Yu. It was that rescue that deepened the karmic ties between them. Thinking of this, she suddenly found the verdant tree before her irksome and threw her glass of champagne at the moon tree before returning to her room to rest. But before she could relax, trouble knocked on her door. Chan brought the female ghost back to the hotel and presented her with a reservation change form to sign. The reason the ghost had left the hotel was to see the gentle baker who had treated her kindly in life one last time. In the past, the baker had held her hand to feel the soft bread. Wall, uninterested in such a non-profitable venture, had refused without a second thought. However, Chan insisted and held her hand to sign the form. The act of writing together reminded Wall of the past when Go taught her to write, softening her attitude toward Chan a bit and kindly reminding him not to be exploited by spirits. Having obtained the signed change form, Chan started looking for the baker for the female ghost. 
To help her identify the right person through the touch of their palms, he brought her to the bakery she mentioned and lent her his own hand. He went about touching the hands of each baker, alarming everyone into thinking Chan was some sort of pervert. Fortunately, his friend arrived just in time to save him and helped locate the baker. Wall warned Chan that spirits could forget important things if they wandered outside for too long. What this female ghost had forgotten was that the baker had hit her with his vehicle and fled the scene. After learning this truth, Chan hurried back to the bakery. By then, the baker was getting ready to leave on his motorcycle. Just then, Chan's phone rang, and the familiar ringtone helped the female ghost recover her lost memory. She had been hit by the baker, who she had grabbed and asked for help before dying, hearing that very ringtone. Now transformed into an evil spirit, she was sitting on the back of the baker's motorcycle, waiting for the opportunity to take revenge. To prevent a tragedy, Chan took a shortcut to intercept the motorcycle and successfully stop the baker. He then pleaded with the ghost to give up her vengeance. After she agreed, he gave the baker a good beating before handing him over to the police and saw the ghost off on the bus to the afterlife. Through this incident, Chan gained a deeper understanding of his job at the Hotel Del Luna and began to actively serve the ghosts. Little did he know, a danger was approaching him. The bartender and the housekeeper were quite wary of him after witnessing how he could stimulate the growth of the moon tree's branches. They feared that the Hotel Del Luna would vanish and that several people would need to take the bus to the underworld. Wall, perturbed by the dreams Chan had of her, began entertaining the idea of driving him away. After some deliberation, they planned to use the female ghost in room 13 to scare Chan off. To execute the plan, Wall sought out Chan in the courtyard and found him sleeping soundly like a pig under the moon tree. She couldn't help but want to brush the fallen branches off him, but to her surprise, Chan suddenly woke up and began to talk about the dreams he had of Wall's past. This made Wall feel as though her privacy had been invaded, leading to a verbal sparring match between the two. However, Chan thanked her for the help she provided when he blocked the motorcycle. Wall denied it insincerely, but Chan simply asked her to continue protecting him and then left the moon tree, a statement that somewhat shook Wall's resolve to send him to room 13. At that moment, the housekeeper informed Chan that the guest in room 13 needed help. Oblivious, Chan went to room 13. After some hesitation, Wall couldn't bear it any longer and rushed into room 13, stopping Chan from opening the closet before he could see the female ghost. She urged him not to listen or look. However, the female ghost, smelling a human, had already crawled out of the closet. In a moment of urgency, Wall kissed Chan to stop him from turning around and instructed him to run out without looking back because seeing the female ghost in room 13 could drive him mad. Chan complied with Wall's command, ran outside and closed the door. But as Wall was locking the female ghost back in the closet, Chan heard the ghost imitating Wall's cries for help and returned to the room. He swiftly embraced Wall just as the ghost was about to attack her. The move stunned Wall and allowed the female ghost to seize the opportunity to escape the hotel. After the incident, Wall hurried to check on Chan's mental state. Once she confirmed he was unharmed, she began to mock him for faltering at the crucial moment and teased him for being a scaredy cat. This left Chan in disbelief that he was being called a coward. The staff at Hotel de Luna had hoped to drive Chan away. They even had the receptionist search for Yuna, thinking she could be the next manager of the hotel. The receptionist went to the school and even managed to save Yuna from falling down the stairs. But humans can't see the receptionist, so her classmates were shocked to see Yuna leaning, but not falling down the stairs. Just as the receptionist was about to explain his presence to Yuna, he was informed that their plan had failed. With no other choice, the receptionist returned to the hotel. After reflecting on the past events, Chan realized that he had been set up. Furious, he confronted Wall. After receiving confirmation, he kicked Wall's dropped earring under a table to prevent her from finding it. This incident made Wall reconsider her desire to replace Chan, and she even began to care for him a little. However, Chan's untimely mention of Yu made Wall visibly saddened, because the Yu who loved her so much had passed away 1300 years ago. Wall hid in her room, reminiscing about her time with Yu, while Chan decided to head home early from work. But as he reached the hotel's entrance, he encountered the ghost called Min. She appeared because her parents put the red pouch containing her spirit in a sky lantern, hoping to choose a stranger for her to marry in the afterlife. Whoever found the red pouch would have to marry Min. Not wanting to marry a stranger or force a living person to marry, she came to the hotel for help, but fainted due to exhaustion. Left with no choice, Chan took Min to Wall for help, but Wall was not pleased with his aiding a ghost. 
After settling Min into a guest room, Chan went out to find her red pouch. However, Wall's sudden appearance slowed him down, and by chance, Chan's friend picked up the pouch. Upon hearing this news, Chan hurried home, only to find his friend terrified by the appearance of Min and the red thread of fate on his pinky finger. While Chan racked his brain for a solution, Min's parents called. They had received a call from the opportunistic Wool, who had arranged to spend a large sum to organize the ghost marriage, even giving Wall a VIP card to buy whatever was needed for the wedding. Frustrated and at a loss, Chan could only beg Wool for help, but she nonchalantly suggested that Chan's friend should consider it all a bad dream, a response that did not satisfy Chan. After much thought, he went to the pharmacy address on the business card to seek help from the death-guiding deity, but instead encountered another two deities, the matchmaker deity, in charge of human relationship and marriages, suggested that he should find one of the hotel's guests to marry ghost men in his friend's place. This really solved Chan's predicament. He immediately returned to the hotel to hold a matchmaking event for Min, but she didn't find anyone she liked. She handed the red pouch to Chan, asking him or his friend to marry her. This put Chan in a difficult position. To save his friend, he decided to marry Min. But when he opened the door, he was stunned to see Wall from ancient times in a wedding dress. The present-day Wool brought him back to reality, informing Chan that she had someone bring Min's boyfriend to marry her. It turns out Min did want to get married, contrary to not wanting to leave the human world. It was her boyfriend's parents who were arranging the ghost marriage. Min and her boyfriend were deeply in love and suffered an accident on their wedding day. His parents, worried that Min's ghost would take their son, resorted to this ghost marriage. Once the ghost marriage was completed, the person married to Min would accompany her to the afterlife. Panicking, Chan tried to break into the wedding venue, but couldn't open the door. Just when he was frantic, the groom ran out. Min ultimately couldn't bear to take her beloved boyfriend with her in death. She intentionally scared him away, allowing his spirit to return to his body and cut the red thread of fate with scissors given by the matchmaker deity. This scene moved both Chan and Wall. Subsequently, they personally escorted Min onto the afterlife bus, while Wall entrusted Chan to give her a proper send-off when her time comes. After work at the hotel, Chan met a male ghost on the subway. To persuade him to check into the hotel, Chan took the ghost to a convenience store to buy beer, only to unexpectedly come across a superstar gathering a crowd. Reminded of Wall, the superstar's biggest fan, he followed the onlookers to ask for an autograph, but ultimately he abandoned the idea. Just as he was about to turn back home, he bumped into Wall who was looking for him. They planned to go to the West Coast for Baby Octopus, but before they could leave, Wall, hearing that the superstar was filming at a nearby food store, excitedly dashed off. But she still didn't get to see her idol, leaving her no choice but to drag Chan to the food store. There, she told Chan that the store owner's daughter was a lucky star because of her many good deeds in a past life, while evildoers could only reincarnate as pigs or dogs. The speaker was casual, but the listener was concerned. Chan was already unhappy with Wall making money from ghosts, so he became worried she might be reborn as an animal. To prevent this, he started making plans for Wall to live a more frugal life, with the first step being to force her to sell her car to pay off debts. Despite her extreme reluctance, she eventually complied. Ever since her classmates witnessed Yuna's eerie incident, they kept their distance and deliberately isolated her. After their last encounter, Yuna and the receptionist became friends and chatted in the school's piano room. The girls heard her talking to herself and concluded she was a weirdo talking to ghosts. Yana pretended to play the piano, but she was exposed since her body was inhabited by the troublemaking spirit who couldn't actually play the piano. The girls had long felt that Yuna was different and thought she was possessed. They teased Yuna to play the piano, and in her panic, she touched the keys, unsure of what to do next. Then the receptionist came up behind her, guided her hands, and together they played a beautiful melody, a tune that also brought back memories of his own sister for the receptionist. Afterward, Wall sensed the ghost resembling a famous king coming to the hotel. Excited, she led all the staff to the lobby to greet him with grand ceremonial honors, startling Chan. He told Wall that this man was not the king, but she didn't believe him. Eventually, this person was just an actor playing the king in a TV drama, but the proud Wall refused to admit her ignorance. Under Chan's cunning plan, Wall agreed to help the actor fulfill his dream of playing a king. They disguised themselves as volunteers at a food cart and infiltrated the drama set. 
To Wool's surprise, she discovered that the drama's lead actor was unable to portray the king's authority and was discussing giving up the role and the associated multi-million dollar fee. She immediately saw the potential use for a ghost actor. Pretending to be the queen, she lured the lead actor to an unnoticed spot, then had the ghost take over the lead actor's body. This not only fulfilled the ghost actor's dream of playing a king, but also allowed Wall to earn a share of the actor's fee. Chan quickly found out and warned Wool, but she didn't take his words to heart and enlisted the receptionist to take over the drama's follow-up affairs, with Yuna's help. As Yuna left, she brushed past Chan's ex-girlfriend, Mira. Wall and Chan were supposed to meet at the hotel and go on a date to the West Coast, but when the dressed-up Wall saw no sign of Chan, her mood soured. The receptionist inappropriately praised Chan's ex-girlfriend while talking to Yuna. Put off by this, Wall ran to the hotel's beach to stare at the sea, asking the control room to adjust the sunlight to resemble an evening's glow. The beautiful view of the sea and sandy beach reminded her of past moments when Chan had caught fireflies to cheer her up, which only made her sadder. Meanwhile, Chan, confused about the canceled date, confronted Wall at the hotel, asking why she changed her mind. He then presented her with an autograph from her superstar idol, explaining that his delay wasn't because of Mira, but because he had run into the superstar on the way and had gone out of his way to get an autograph to fulfill Wool's fangirl dreams. He even took a photo to prove it. Realizing the truth, Wool's mood improved considerably. Even though they didn't get to the real seaside, but stayed in the hotel watching the artificial sea, with Chan by her side, it was especially beautiful. Wall fondly remembered her past life with Go. Back then, he was the princess's guard, standing vigil by the city walls night after night, admiring the moon and yearning for Wall. Over time, as they spent more time together, Wall found herself falling for him, too. She would sneak out to visit him, but upon seeing him with the princess, hormone jealousy would drive her away. Go would chase after Wool, and they would tease and chide each other playfully. He never hid his affection for her. Time slipped away, and Chan got used to his job at Hotel Del Luna. One day, while he was planning to send off a male ghost who had perished in an avalanche, the ghost unexpectedly encountered his wife staying together with her first love. The situation spiraled out of control. The married couple started arguing and even got physical. When Chan tried to intervene, he was thrown aside. Wall appeared just in time to calm the storm. For the Hotel Del Luna, a ghostly love triangle was merely a minor incident. What truly troubled both humans and ghosts was the case of the runaway ghost from Room 13. Since her escape, she had been sending sneaky videos to men, and any man who succumbed to temptation and opened the video would be blinded by the ghostly woman and killed as punishment for his lechery. The men's bodies were carried out of the restrooms, and it just so happened that Yuna was at the scene of the crime. Shocked by the man's strange death, she went to the restroom to investigate and found the man's phone on the floor. At that moment, a Taoist priest arrived who was specializing in capturing ghosts. She didn't see the female ghost, but found the possessed Yuna. Mistaking Yuna for a malevolent spirit, the priest attempted to obliterate her with her powers. In the nick of time, a messenger from hell appeared and clarified the situation, saving Yuna from disaster. After several humans had fallen victim to the female ghost, the priest issued an order demanding that Wall bring the ghost back quickly. Yuna became vulnerable due to the priest's attack. Nearby ghosts sought to take over her body, and in fear, she hid inside a storage locker. That's when the receptionist appeared, opened the locker to wipe away Yuna's tears, and held her as they left the classroom to rest in the infirmary. Wall began to search for the ghost from room 13. She got the cell phone of the male victim from Yuna and discovered the video link used as bait by the ghost from room 13. However, the link had to be opened by a human to be effective. With no other choice, Wall had to use Chan as bait. Despite his reluctance, Chan clicked the video. To their surprise, the video merely showed a room created from resentment, indicating that the ghost had other hiding places. To find her quickly, Chan specifically visited the sister of the ghost, who was still alive in the human world. Through the sister, Chan learned of the ghost's tragic past. She was a university student who had been filmed in a compromising video. The video was circulated among male students in her department and even leaked far and wide. The men watched the video and leered at the girl, yet none stood up to remind the others to stop their inhumane behavior. Eventually, the girl ended her own life due to the mental torment. From the sisters' account, they learned that the ghost from room 13 targeted those who spread the video. The only one still alive was the instigator. 
Thus, Wall and Chan quickly found the instigator and took the opportunity to steal his phone. But when they opened the link on the phone, they discovered that the ghost wasn't hiding there. Chan realized that the medium for spreading the link wasn't limited to phones. There were also computers. He rushed to the instigator's company. Just as the ghost was about to attack the instigator, the Taoist priest arrived and incinerated the ghost, dispersing her soul. Chan felt a tinge of discomfort, as the ghost was also a victim. But justice would prevail. Although the ghost from Room 13 could not take revenge herself, Wall sent the instigator an invitation card and forcibly controlled his car, driving it to the Hotel Del Luna. Upon arrival, the instigator walked into Room 13, which had transformed into the apartment he once rented. Recognizing the familiar setting, the instigator finally admitted to the crimes he had committed. He had installed a camera facing the bed and filmed himself bullying the girl. Confronted with such a demon, Wall transported him and his car onto the train tracks and pressed him about his sins. The man, a habitual offender, couldn't even remember the ghostly girl. It took him a while to recall the classmate he had driven to suicide, yet he felt no remorse. In the end, the instigator was killed by a train, receiving the fate he deserved. The priest just watched from a distance as he was hit, offering no help. Later, the instigator's actions were exposed. While Wall was pleased with the good deed she had done, she learned that the instigator had left behind a fortune of four billion, which had all been turned over to the state. For her, who loved money as much as life itself, the regret of not having extorted him while alive was a bitter pill to swallow. To cheer up Wall, Chan took her to the West Coast for a date. But as they basked in their sweet moments, Chan's ex-girlfriend Mira suddenly appeared. Seeing Mira approaching Chan, Wall's mood soured instantly. She was reminded of the day when Go and the princess were married. Wall had barged into the mansion and into the princess's room. Upon seeing her, the princess regretted sparing her life. Without hesitation, Wall struck down the princess and wore the bride's dress. Wall never imagined that a millennium later, she would encounter this princess she hated once again. Unable to withstand the current shock, she conjured a fierce wind with her resentment and pushed Mira's heavy body into the sea, then took her bag and left with it, leaving Chan dumbfounded. Chan quickly rescued Mira and returned to the hotel to find Wool, but couldn't see her. The staff comforted him, explaining that Wool was bound to the hotel. If she left for more than one night, the Moon Tree would bring the hotel to her location. This means that Wool has no place in either the world of the living or the dead, except the Del Luna Hotel. Chan then understood what Wall meant by saying she couldn't die, and his pity for her deepened. Sure enough, Wall returned to the hotel, looking particularly dispirited. To comfort her, Chan had the room service prepare champagne. Wall joined Chan on the rooftop for a chat, where he expressed his concern, making Wall feel cherished and deepening her feelings for him. However, this did not mean that Wool was ready to let Mira off the hook. She had Yuna closely monitor Mira's every move. One day, Mira contacted Chan, asking if her friend could stay at the hotel where he worked. Learning the details, Chan requested Wall to catch a ghost at Mira's friend's house. Wall reluctantly agreed. Upon entering the friend's house, they heard music. Chan went in first and was embraced by a vintage girl. Wall was furious at the sight and wanted to kill the girl who clung to Chan. Wall rummaged through the room and discovered that the vintage girl, who popped up from time to time, was not a ghost, but a fantasy character created by someone. The friend's mother, at the age of 22, married a man she didn't love and longed for an ordinary romance. Her heavy fixation led her to create the vintage girl, infusing her romantic aspirations into the character, imagining a script where multiple men adored her. To let the fantasy girl go, the mother burned the postcards and diaries filled with her fantasies, ending it all. This gave Wall the perfect idea for her revenge against Mira, the reincarnated princess who stole her love. She sent Mira a hotel invitation card and then instructed the receptionist to reopen the amusement park just for Mira. Using the family portrait from Mira's bag as a blueprint, she recreated the amusement park of Mira's childhood and crafted an unfortunate little Mira, imbuing her with the experience of being abandoned by her parents, hoping she would live in that shadow for the rest of her life. However, when Chan learned that Mira had come to the hotel for the rendezvous, he hurried over. Before Mira could take the hand of the little Mira, Chan stepped in first and embraced the unfortunate illusion, which caused both him and Mira to collapse from the malevolent energy assault, and also put an end to Wool's plans. Chan did not want Wool to be overwhelmed by hatred and lose her sanity, continuing to live in hell. 
To save Chan, Wall had Yuna send Mira back while she purged the malevolent energy from Chan. Watching the man who obstructed her revenge, Wall was filled with conflict. She recalled all the grudges and grievances between herself and the princess. In the past, as a thief, Wall and Yu were about to join the rebels, leave this place, and rebuild their kingdom. However, just before leaving, she saw her own wine bottle hanging from the tree they always visited, their secret signal with Go. Wall hurried to their old meeting place to see her lover, only to fall into the princess's trap and get caught. Go was even ordered to capture Yu, who was soon hanged to death in front of Wall, while she was saved by Go. The princess promised not to trouble Wall further. But to avenge everyone, on the wedding night of the princess and Go, Wall stealthily entered the bridal chamber, and after killing the princess, she planned to assassinate Go. This hatred had been hidden in her heart for a thousand years. Today, seeing Chan's actions, Wall did not want him to join her in her hellish life. After much thought, she sent the mountain painting and Chan back to his friend's house and left without a goodbye, relocating the hotel elsewhere, effectively announcing that Chan had been dismissed from the Del Luna Hotel. Upon waking, Chan sensed something was amiss when he saw the painting. He hurried to the hotel, but all that greeted him was an empty house which left him feeling utterly lost. With no other choice, he sought help at the pharmacy, but the herbalist deity was unwilling to divulge Wall's whereabouts. Instead, she handed him medicine that would seal his third eye, taking it would allow Chan to return to a normal life. Meanwhile, Wall began the preparations for relocating and rebuilding the hotel. Due to her extravagant lifestyle, they were forced to choose a remote countryside location for the new hotel site. Although the interior environment remained unchanged, Wall, accustomed to a life of luxury, felt unsatisfied. To make matters worse, she was infuriated when a real estate agent called to inform her that the land could not be transferred because the inheritance tax had not been paid. Wall was frustrated with the complexities of human society and was unsettled once again when she suddenly heard Chan's voice over the phone. He had returned to the hotel by chance and encountered the agent. He accused Wall of leaving without a word and proposed that she invite him back to the hotel. After a moment of hesitation, Wall chose to have the agent send him away. However, the phone call disrupted Wall's emotions. Feeling upset, she wanted to drink away her sorrows, but the cocktail prepared by the bartender was not to her taste. Consequently, Wall had no choice but to sneak into the nearby distillery to steal some rice wine. After satisfying her craving for alcohol, she planned to return to the hotel but unexpectedly encountered the guardian deity of the village's well water. With nothing better to do, Wall struck up a conversation with him. Yuna and the receptionist, both candidates for the next manager position, together hauled Wall's luggage and alcohol to the Del Luna Hotel. On the way, they saw a female ghost sitting in a gray car beside them. When the ghost saw that Yuna could see her, she asked for help. The compassionate Yuna told the driver to follow the gray car, which led them to a forest. There they saw a male ghost. Sensing something was wrong, Yuna went to investigate the forest and stumbled upon a corpse, along with many ghosts appearing before her. The police soon received a report and found five secretly buried bodies on the mountain. The male officer in charge of the investigation was Yu from a past life. Yuna and the receptionist brought the spirits back to the hotel. Unable to find Wall, Chan could only go home, where he encountered the chairman, who had already passed away. Before departing to the afterlife, he wished to see the mountain painting one last time. This revelation sparked an idea in Chan. He recommended the Del Luna Hotel to the chairman, and under his guidance, finally found the location of Wall. Seeing Chan appear at the hotel once again, Wall was both shocked and delighted, but she tried her best to conceal her emotions. Chan, seizing on her love for money, took sweet revenge by exploiting the chairman's desire to buy back the painting at a high price. How could she have carelessly discarded him and the painting? She must be regretting it now. Afterwards, Chan took it upon himself to start working. He went to the hotel reception to greet guests, but unexpectedly, unable to distinguish spirits from ghosts, he mistook the well-guardian deity for a ghost and ushered him in. This not only resulted in Chan being drenched with well water, but also left the hotel in a sorry state with water seeping everywhere. Wall was speechless. But since a deity had entered, she had no choice but to accommodate, unable to drive him away. She racked her brains for a way to get him to leave. At that moment, the well deity requested a private meeting with Chan, which Wall strongly opposed. However, Chan saw no malice in the well deity and managed to calm Wool before going to meet with him alone. Watching Chan enter the room, Wall followed anxiously, knocking on the door, fearing for his safety. 
Inside, Chan learned the reason why the Well Deity had come to the Del Luna Hotel. It's then revealed that the deity had been providing well water to the distillery. But now, due to the distillery's unrestrained extraction, the well was at risk of drying up. Fearing abandonment if it dried up, the deity sought refuge at the hotel, knowing Chan was a kind human and hoping he would help. In exchange, the well deity showed Chan his deepest fear, Wall being destroyed by the herbalist deity. After agreeing to help the well deity, Chan and Wall brought a gourd carrying his spirit to a villa built by the chairman. There was a small spring there, modest but comfortable enough for him to live happily, securing him a good home. After settling the well deity's affairs, Chan promptly threw the medicine given by the herbalist deity into the river, which infuriated Wall because she had gone through a lot of trouble to obtain that medicine, but all Chan wanted was to be by Wool's side, hoping she would always protect him. Before he could fully express his feelings, the well deity suddenly emerged from the spring and returned the medicine pill to him. Chan was speechless over that. Wall handed over the pill, but Chan refused to take it. He was determined to stay by Wool's side and would never let her come to a dusty end. To get Wall to agree to rehire him at the hotel, he took her to a restaurant that the superstar had once enjoyed. But Wall declined, claiming she no longer had feelings for her idol. The clever Chan, however, had long picked up from her occasional slips in behavior that she was saying one thing but feeling another. After dinner, Chan escorted Wall back to the hotel and got straight to work. The first task he took on was to deliver a letter to the chairman's granddaughter on his behalf, which Wall was not happy about. But what really made her jealous was that the bartender had recommended Chan as a prospective suitor for the chairman's granddaughter. In an attempt to prevent Chan from going on a date with the chairman's granddaughter, Wool rushed to Chan's office, only to run into the bartender who was there to remind Chan of the date. Hearing their voices, Wall dragged Chan behind the door, and the intimate position they found themselves in made her blush. She had to raise her voice at Chan to cover up her own fluster. She thought the crisis was averted, but the next day, the chairman purchased a dream-calling service and introduced Chan to his granddaughter over the phone. An upset Wall hung up the phone in a huff, but the granddaughter followed her grandfather's advice and arranged to meet Chan for a meal, which was narrated in colorful detail to Wall by the bartender. Furious, Wall stormed to the library where the two were supposed to meet. Fortunately, Chan declined the granddaughter's affections, saying he was already interested in someone else. To cheer up Wall, he took her to see the mountain painting at the gallery and then to catch ghosts at a library built by the chairman. This ghost guarded a book, not allowing anyone to read it, scaring away anyone who approached. When they reached the book, Chan tried to pull it out but was stopped by the ghost. After the ghost revealed herself, Chan inquired about the situation. It turned out that the book contained a fact that the ghost wanted to bury. She asked Chan to help her get rid of the book. Chan agreed without hesitation, and when he saw a photo in the book, he was shocked to find it was a picture of him as a child. The ghost turned out to be Chan's biological mother, who thought that bearing a child was a stain that needed to be hidden from the family. Chan was hurt by this revelation, as he had never met his mother and didn't expect that she had passed away. These photos had been sent to her by his father, but for his mother, they represented a past she wanted to conceal. Wall wanted to comfort Chan, but her words came out wrong, turning into an argument instead, which only upset Chan more. He left for his friend's pizza shop, leaving Wall alone in the library. Unexpectedly, Chan stumbled upon the reincarnated Yu here, and to his surprise, Yu had become friends with Chan's ex-girlfriend, Mira. This worried him greatly, as the unresolved grievances between the two and Wall could pose a problem. Previously, while investigating a case, Yu encountered the matchmaker deity, who gifted him a pink heart-shaped pen symbolizing romantic destiny. Yu carried it with him obediently, but during a taxi ride, he accidentally left the heart pen in the vehicle. It just so happened that Mira, who got into the taxi next, called out to Yu to return the pen to him. Their eyes met, reminiscent of a scene from their past lives. The color of the pen also matched that of the princess's clothing. Mira noticed a mark on her white dress made by the heart pen and went to confront Yu about it, but the pen had black ink and the mark on her dress was of a different color. Realizing the mix-up, the two struck up a connection and exchanged contact information. At this point, Chan was torn about whether to tell Wall about Yu's reincarnation. Considering Wool's longing for Yu, he couldn't help but take her to the police station where Yu worked to catch a glimpse of him. Upon seeing her friend Yu, Wool's eyes filled with tears, and Yu, looking up, also stared intently at the somewhat familiar Wool. In their shared gaze was the indescribable nostalgia and fellowship that spanned a millennium. 
However, Wall quickly composed herself and left, as knowing that Yu was doing well in this life was enough for her. After leaving the police station, Wall pondered ways to comfort Chan. Eventually, she decided to invite Chan's mother to the hotel and texted him to invite him back to work, as there was a certain guest that needed his attention. After some hesitation, Chan returned to the hotel and personally escorted his mother onto the vehicle bound for the afterlife. Although it was their final farewell, Chan was grateful to Wall for her thoughtful gesture. After her encounter with Yu, Wall's heart began to unravel. She started to let go of her resentment and hoped Chan could also bring her past lover to her. Chan reassured her that he would never let her down. As Chan embraced her, their relationship finally progressed further, and the moon tree blossomed successfully thanks to their love. Chan once again dreamed of Wool's past. On the day he was preparing to leave, Wall saw a wine bottle with her mark hanging from a tree. She decided to go to their old meeting spot to see Go, who was also there waiting for her, hoping to give Wall a headpiece he had personally selected. When Chan woke up, he received a gift from Wall. To thank Chan for the warmth he had brought her, Wall gave him a tiger print suit, which puzzled him about her source of funds. However, when he learned that Wall had extorted a sum of money from the chairman, Chan immediately went to reason with Wall, who ignored his warnings and even complained that he hadn't worn the suit. In order to ensure the money Wall earned was well-deserved, and not just from providing dream services to a select few, Chan personally supervised her as she handled the ghostly dream calls, which exhausted Wall. Among them, a father and son who had been in a traffic accident wanted to call the truck driver responsible. But the father didn't wish to curse or blame the driver. Instead, he wanted to help the driver overcome his guilt by apologizing. It wasn't the driver's fault. It was the fault of the father and son who had carelessly run onto the road. Seeing the grateful bows of the father and son, Wall felt her efforts were worthwhile. To reward Wall for her hard work, Chan took her out for snacks. Their relationship warmed step by step, and the moon tree was in full bloom, signifying that once the flowers withered, Wall would leave the hotel to be sent to the underworld. A firefly landed on the moon tree, always accompanying Wool, watching her from the closest possible distance. Yuna, who brought the ghosts back to the hotel, was interrogating the ghosts with the receptionist, hoping to help them catch the culprit. She identified the owner of the gray car as the prime suspect for the buried corpses and gave the license plate number to Chan, hoping he could help with the investigation. Yuna was skilled in drawing and wanted to continue working on the suspect's portrait. One day, Chan was suddenly taken to meet the former manager of the Hotel Del Luna. After leaving, she went into politics. She wanted Chan to take her to see Wall and he happily agreed. Chan learned the former manager had come for the lunar eclipse. It turns out, whenever a lunar eclipse occurred, Hotel Del Luna would appear in its true form to the human world. This meant that humans could also see this special hotel, although in most cases, they were denied accommodation. Only during the lunar eclipse in 1981, a newlywed couple came to Hotel Del Luna due to heavy rain and curfew. This former manager received them under Wall's instruction and allowed them to stay in a room specially prepared for humans. Unexpectedly, that couple conceived Korea's most famous soccer star that night and 21 years later became in-laws with the former manager. Hence, she believed it was the hotel's blessing to the couple and she wanted her daughter and son-in-law to spend their wedding night there during this eclipse. Chan found this unbelievable, even boldly visiting the room. Wall agreed to the former manager's request and all the hotel staff were preparing for this special wedding. Chan and Wall were busy and planned to watch the new moon after the eclipse once the newlyweds entered their bridal chamber. However, before their date could begin, Chan suddenly received a call from a friend pouring out his woes. It turns out, the friend's plan to propose to his girlfriend that night had been thwarted by her no-show. Chan had an uneasy feeling and hurried back to his friend, only to find him dragging luggage, intending to travel to Shanghai in search of his girlfriend who had been in an accident. But the girlfriend's spirit was standing right next to the friend. Chan realized that the girl had missed their appointment because she had passed away. To allow his friend a final meeting with his girlfriend, Chan forcefully took him to the rooftop of the hotel and revealed to him the truth about his girlfriend's death and the real nature of the hotel. As arranged by Chan, the girl appeared before her lover and they had their last farewell before the eclipse ended. Watching the grieving friend, Chan and Wall shared a deep empathy and felt a discomfort about the impending separation between life and death. On the other side, Yuna had completed the drawing of the suspect and was holding it in her hand. As she carefully observed the road, a man came speeding along, nearly hitting Yuna. 
She looked up and noticed the ghost of a woman in the man's car. Yuna took a good look at the man's face and realized it was the murderer. In a rush, she hopped into a taxi to follow him. After the lunar eclipse, the former manager made a special appointment with Chan, not only to thank him for his help, but also to offer him a job after he leaves the hotel. During a private meeting with Wool, she highly recommended Chan and told the former manager that Chan would leave the hotel after sending off the last guest. This saddened Chan. He confessed to the former manager that the last guest was his favorite girl. Just after their conversation ended, Chan received a call from Wool and they agreed to meet at home. But as soon as the call ended, Yuna called him for help. She had followed the murderer to a bar but felt too scared to confront him alone because she was just a little girl, so she called Chan for assistance. Chan told her to go straight home while he hurried to the bar. Using the address provided, Chan arrived at the bar and recognized the murderer was his classmate from the U.S. Moreover, he encountered the ghost of a victim who led him to the evidence of the murderer's crimes. The murderer had learned about Yuna and Chan's pursuit of the murder case, secretly readied a syringe filled with poison to kill Chan at the right moment. However, Chan had already been informed of the murderer's actions through the ghost. When the murderer realized he was exposed, he showed his true colors. He and Chan got into a fight, but at the critical moment, the reincarnated Yu arrived just in time with backup and successfully arrested the murderer. It turns out Chan had called the police before entering the bar. Meanwhile, Wall, who was waiting for Chan, didn't see him arrive. Instead, she encountered the Taoist priestess, who bluntly pointed out that Chan's safety was Wall's greatest fear. And indeed, it was true. Seeing that Chan wasn't home, Wall ran back to the hotel to look for him, only to hear from the receptionist the false news that Chan had been killed by the murderer, which nearly drove her to despair. Fortunately, Chan returned to the hotel just in time to relieve her worries. Seeing the injury on Chan's forehead, Wall was still anxious and bought a bunch of ointments, clumsily applying the wrong one, intended for hemorrhoids, onto Chan's face, causing a mix of laughter and tears. Watching Wall worry about him, Chan embraced her and comforted her using his muscles, also sharing the news of Yu's promotion. Wall then revealed her entire past with her friend Yu. It turns out her life was saved by Yu and his mother. In those turbulent times, they grew up together. To her, Yu was her dearest person. Now that Yu had been reincarnated and she was about to leave, she began to fear the departure after the moon tree's flowers bloomed and faded, the separation from Chan that life and death would bring. This revelation also filled Chan with sadness, leaving him helplessly avoiding her deep affection. We had thought that once the murderer was caught and the evidence of the crime found, the case would be closed. But to everyone's surprise, he managed to escape while receiving treatment at the hospital. He then called Chan to meet him on the rooftop of the hospital. Earlier at the bar, Chan had found the murderer's incriminating evidence and laid out all his murderous deeds. He also candidly mentioned that the ghost of a female victim had been following him. Curious about Chan's words, the murderer arranged the meeting. To protect Chan, Wall accompanied him, hoping to persuade the murderer to turn himself in. Unexpectedly, after the murderer posted a curse on Chan online, he chose to jump from the rooftop. Wall picked up the murderer's phone and saw his ghost. She wanted to vanquish the murderer's spirit right then, but couldn't because he was shielded by the energy from the curse in his post. Watching Wall helpless, the smug ghost of the murderer left triumphantly. After the murderer's departure, Wall began to worry about Chan's safety, insisting that he stay close to her at all times. The case concluded, and the ghostly victim expressed her gratitude to Yuna, who was in high spirits. Yuna then went to visit her true self in front of the ashes of the troublemaking ghost possessing her, who had also been murdered. Empathizing with the wrongfully dead victim brought some comfort to the ghost's heart. The receptionist stayed by Yuna's side, and without realizing it, they grew to love each other. Yuna, not minding that the receptionist wasn't human, kissed him on the cheek and confessed her feelings. Overcome by his emotions, the receptionist kissed Yuna back. In recent days, Wall and Chan have been inseparable. This time, they visited a private clinic with the aim of taking the clinic couple's child. Wall had made a deal with the Grim Reaper. The Reaper would help her capture the vengeful murderer spirit, and in return, Wall was to kill the child and bring him back to the hotel. However, this was not an act of revenge or slaughter because the child was already critically ill. He had managed to survive only because his parents gave him their own lifelines, which left them with graying hair. To give the child a chance to choose on his own, Wall asked Chan to distract the clinic couple while she spoke to the child, explaining everything his parents had done for him and letting him make his own decision. Ultimately, the child chose to give up his life before his parents arrived. 
Having completed their task, Chan took Wall to a friend's restaurant. Looking at the friend who was frantically cooking, trying to cope with missing his girlfriend, Chan asked Wall to deceive him into thinking that his girlfriend was still at the hotel, to offer him some comfort. However, Wall was unwilling to give her friend such a meaningless hope. She exposed Chan's lie in front of the friend, infuriating Chan enough to drag her out and give her a piece of his mind. But Wall shared her concerns that one day she would have to leave, and she wondered if Chan, who had fallen in love with her, would be like his friend, unable to face the truth. The prospect of an impending separation filled Wool with sorrow. She hoped that when the time came for her to leave, Chan would be able to let her go gracefully. Only then would she not fear departing. Chan, however, needed some time to adjust. After comforting his friend, he returned to the hotel courtyard to find Wall and told her that understanding her sorrowful past had deepened their bond and intensified their feelings for each other. Despite the pain of their eventual parting, Chan was willing to bear it and hoped Wall would not be afraid. Moved by his heartfelt confession, Wall could not resist kissing Chan but without using her tongue. They wrestled their muscles, experiencing both the joy and the pain of life's ephemeral beauty. The other day, the hotel welcomed a guest, who was the last male heir of the deeply despised Yoon family by the housekeeper. Once it was confirmed that the man was unmarried and the Yoon family had no other male successors, the housekeeper was finally ready to let go of the 200-year-old grudge. It turns out she used to be a daughter-in-law of the Yoon family, who had given birth to a baby girl. Shortly after her birth, the child died. The family buried the baby hastily, and soon after there were whispers that the baby's grave would curse the family's descendants unless it was destroyed, so that another daughter-in-law could successfully bear a male heir. Upon hearing this, the family head ordered the grave to be dug up, and the housekeeper, now a ghost, watched this heartbreakingly, cursing the family to be childless and continue with no descendants. The housekeeper's resentment had grown deep, and she nearly became an evil spirit if it weren't for the timely appearance of the Hell Messenger and Wall, who saved her. Now, she saw a glimmer of hope for revenge, which worried everyone about her state of mind. Before anyone could go out to find the housekeeper, she returned from the man's funeral, looking defeated like a frost-bitten eggplant. It turned out the Yoon family still had a future. The man had not married, but his girlfriend was pregnant with his child. If the baby was a boy, the family's lineage would continue, and the housekeeper's hatred would persist. She sat in the living room disheartened, remembering how her daughter had died soon after birth because the doctors refused to treat her following the family's orders. She could only watch her daughter die. To comfort the housekeeper, Chan donned the tiger print suit that Wall had given him, hoping to coax a smile from her and briefly make her forget her sorrow. His effort was appreciated by all. Wall ran to find him, but Chan had already taken off the suit. Wall had even wanted to take a proof picture of him in it. Later, the two went to a restaurant and decided to visit the pregnant woman who was the target of the housekeeper's hatred. On the way, they met the deity of wealth, and Wall enthusiastically greeted her, inviting the deity to visit Hotel Del Luna sometime to bring good fortune. Soon after, the pregnant woman suddenly felt a sharp pain in her abdomen while at work. The man rushed back to Hotel Del Luna to inform the housekeeper, hoping she could get a human manager to call emergency services. To resolve the housekeeper's grudge, Wall told her about the pregnant woman's danger and personally took her to witness the family's potential end. However, seeing the woman in distress, the housekeeper couldn't hold back. She asked Chan to help take the woman to the hospital and confided her past to him. She was once the matriarch of the great Yoon family but was despised for not bearing a son. Moreover, the family believed a witch's words that her daughter would obstruct the male heir's fortunes. They forcibly took her daughter away and starved her to death. Driven mad by these events, the family had her killed. Her intense hatred was such that she cursed the Yoon family to have no more sons before she died, and this curse was why she remained at Hotel Del Luna. But today, she ended up saving that one precious child. Hearing such a tragic story, Chan didn't know how to comfort her, but the troubles facing Chan didn't end there. Wall revealed to Chan that the evil murderer spirit had started targeting Chan's closest friends. She had already sent protective charms to her friends. As for Mira, she didn't want to protect her, but for some reason, Wall felt remorseful and decided to tell Chan about it. To protect Mira, Chan and Wall rushed to the cinema in search of her. To their surprise, the target of the evil murderer spirit wasn't Chan's ex-girlfriend, Mira, but Yu. Yu arrived at the cinema for a date with Mira. He was startled by the murderer lurking in the darkness, tumbling down the stairs. 
As Yu lay unconscious on the ground, Wall hurried forward, but Mira beat her to it. Only then did Wall realize that Yu and Mira had become lovers in this life, which flooded her with mixed emotions. Through Wool's words, Chan discovered that she had not killed Go. Upon his questioning, Wall revealed the true end of the story. After Yu was hanged by the princess, she infiltrated the bridal chamber, killed the princess, and dueled Go while disguised as the bride. However, she didn't go through with the killing. Go's death was his own doing. He impaled himself on Wall's sword when she was distracted. Apparently, he chose this ending to extinguish Wool's hatred and to watch over her from the heavens. But contrary to his wishes, Wall went mad with vengeance, refusing to let Go have his way, and went on a killing spree in the kingdom. She took her people's belongings in a coffin and was eventually confined to Hotel Del Luna to atone for her sins. For over 1,300 years, Wall waited for Go to appear, intending to drag him to hell, but instead, Chan came to redeem her. Their entangled love and hate began to unravel with his arrival, but it seemed heaven had more trials in store for them. One day, a little boy with a drawing of the hotel burst in, wanting to see his mother. Being so small, he slipped past the receptionist and into Hotel Del Luna, and by a twist of fate, ended up at the platform for the afterlife bus. Chan, mistaking that the boy had boarded the Reaper's vehicle, chased him into the afterlife tunnel, but got lost. Just as he couldn't find the way, a firefly appeared, and by possessing him, successfully led him out of the tunnel. Meanwhile, Wall learned that Chan had ventured into the afterlife tunnel, so she ran to the entrance without even changing her clothes. Seeing Chan emerge step by step, she threw her heavy body into his arms with teary eyes. However, Chan's pat on the head stunned her, as it was Go's last gesture before his death. Chan's safe return from the afterlife tunnel was a stroke of luck, but the pat on the head made Wall mistakenly believe he was Go reincarnated. Moments later, as Chan came back to his senses, Wall ran back to the hotel. In truth, the Firefly was Go, who had always been with Wall. He had intended to embark on the path to the afterlife, but along the way, he helped the lost Chan return. This drained much of the Firefly's energy, leaving Go's presence fainter than ever. The death-guiding deity encountered Wall by the moon tree, informing her that Go was already by her side and handing her a hairpin that Go had failed to deliver a thousand years ago, pushing Wall to the brink of collapse. Now, believing Chan to be the reincarnation of Go, she struggled to accept that the man she had hated for a millennium had transformed into the person she now deeply loved. The deity did not provide answers for Wall, but waited for her to decide whether to see Chan as Go and kill him for revenge, or continue to love Chan and receive redemption. After leaving the courtyard, Wall encountered Chan. The moment she saw him, the hairpin in her hand suddenly transformed into a long sword. Without hesitation, she stepped forward and plunged the sword into Chan's chest. Watching him collapse to the ground unconscious, Wall trembled with fear. This scene was coincidentally witnessed by the housekeeper, who approached with concern and asked what happened. It turned out that what had just transpired was merely an illusion of wolves. She had subconsciously made a choice. She had killed the Chan she deeply loved. The housekeeper consoled her, suggesting that Chan might not be the reincarnation of Go. Wall calmed down, realizing she could never really kill Chan. As for her own path forward, she needed to give it more thought. Wall examined the hairpin, as if seeing her past in it. She saw the past she didn't wish to remember. This hairpin, which had barely escaped Wall's grasp, once again dragged her into the abyss. With resentment from the past, Wall had become a vengeful spirit sealed within the hairpin. Later, ahead of the Reaper and Chan, Wall found the murderer and asked him to consume the resentment-filled hairpin to become a malevolent spirit. This meant that Wall would become the murderer's accomplice, a malevolent spirit herself, and face an obliterated fate. But at this time, Chan was unaware of all this. He couldn't help but complain after learning that Wall had let the murderer go. The mentally shattered Wall then told him about her conversation with the death-guiding deity, declaring that she would no longer protect the person she had hated for a thousand years. This turn of events was too much for Chan to process immediately. He followed the departing Wall back to the hotel, but she locked herself in the Moon Tree Courtyard and sealed the entrance. Unable to enter, the anxious Chan was beside himself with worry. To understand everything, Chan ran to the pharmacy to find the herbalist deity and confirm his relationship with Go. Instead, he encountered the firefly that Go had become, brought back by the deity in a very weakened state. The firefly was the first guest of the Hotel Del Luna. 
But another deity reminded Chan that what was most important at that moment was to retrieve Wall's hairpin. So Chan followed the scent of Wool's hairpin, found the murderer, and stalled for time waiting for the hotel's staff and the Reaper to rescue them and capture the malevolent spirit. Chan returned to the hotel with Wall's hairpin and saved the desperate Wall from the hands of the Taoist priest, sparing her a fate of being reduced to ashes. To resolve Wall's inner turmoil, Chan handed the hairpin back to her and asked her to personally end his life. This would settle Wall's hatred and he could always protect her. However, Wall, deeply in love with Chan and holding the hairpin that had turned into a dagger, could not bring herself to act. After much hesitation, she chose to abandon revenge. As for the murderer, he was taken to a room by the housekeeper where the ghostly victims he had killed were already waiting to punish him. After this incident, Wall decided to confront her past head on. She invited Mira and Yu to the hotel and offered them a cocktail made with the moon tree petals. Unexpectedly, this helped Wall witness past events she had never known about. In the past, Wall rushed to meet Go. Go was waiting at their usual spot, intending to give Wall a hairpin. Unexpectedly, the princess arrived and informed Go of her father king's suspicion that Go was colluding with Wall, who joined the rebel. To protect Go from suspicion, the princess secretly ordered the army to eradicate Wall and her gang. If Go were to show favoritism, all the wanderers associated with him would perish. With no other choice, Go had to join the task force to capture Wall and her associates. At the moment of his arrest, Yu came to realize that Go was willing to protect Wall at all costs, even if it meant framing others as rebels. In the end, he was prepared to die to atone for his actions. Yu made it clear that he wanted Go to save Wall and redeem himself in this manner. However, after witnessing the tragic death of her friend, Wall was consumed with hatred and went on a killing spree on the night of the princess and Go's wedding. As a result, she was punished by the death-guiding deity and condemned to redeem her sins at the Hotel del Luna. Now having learned the truth, Wall was finally able to peacefully let go of the hatred she had clung to for a thousand years. The deity, who had been silently helping her, believed the time was right and revealed to her that Go had not been reincarnated. He was the first guest of Hotel del Luna, and to honor his vow to protect Wall, he had remained by her side in the form of a firefly. Now, if Wall so wished, Go would appear before her. Indeed, upon Wool's soft call, Go did appear to meet her. However, the scene was no longer as it used to be. With Go's reappearance, the hairpin Wall had cherished also vanished, signifying that after a thousand years of entanglement, both Wall and Go had finally let go of each other. To ensure Wool's redemption was complete, the deity told her about Go's venture into the underworld tunnel to save Chan and proposed that she escort Go to the underworld. This would be Wool's final test before she could leave the moon tree. On the day of departure, Chan personally saw Wall off. Before leaving, Wall asked him to wait for her return. As time slowly passed, Chan stood by the empty entrance of the underworld tunnel, his heart filling with sadness, fearing that this farewell might mean they would never see each other again. Meanwhile, Wall was walking across the bridge with Go, who reached out his hand, inviting her to leave with him. The hotel staff waited at the entrance to the underworld, fearing that Wall had followed Go to the afterlife and never returned. The herbalist deity has started to prepare the brewing of the powerful moon tree drink for the next hotel owner. This new owner will also be someone filled with grievances. Upon drinking the powerful drink, their soul will be bound to the moon tree. However, when it was time to gather the ingredients, the herbalist deity found that the most crucial herb for the drink was all used up. To obtain new herbs, one would have to travel through the time tunnel to return to the preceding residence of the Hotel del Luna some 200 years prior. Upon learning of this, the deity assigned the task to Chan, who still longed for wool, and instructed him to refrain from eating or drinking anything there, lest he be unable to return. Eager at the prospect of seeing Wall from a century ago, Chan readily accepted the mission. He followed Deity's directions to the entrance of the residence, where he met the housekeeper and the bartender. While expertly locating the herbs, Chan was unexpectedly caught by Wall, who mistook him for a thief. During their standoff, the Deity of Poverty burst into the residence demanding repayment from Wall, who was so frightened that she hastily hid. Chan mentioned that he was on good terms with several deities. Wall found a place to drink and chat with him. During his stay, Chan learned from the housekeeper and the bartender that the deity of poverty was after Wall because she had taken up gambling out of boredom and initially won a lot of money by cheating. But when the deity of poverty came knocking, Wall ended up losing everything. Chan knew that once a deity appeared here, Wall and the others could not drive it away. 
However, he also knew that the deity of poverty was not truly intent on making Wall homeless, but merely wanted to discipline her a little. To this end, Chan came up with a win-win solution. He convinced Wall to promise the deity of poverty that she would no longer hide after leaving, and through reason, he successfully persuaded the deity to leave the residence with a game of Go. This delighted Wall, who showed gratitude to Chan, inviting him to stay at the residence. However, Chan wanted to return to the present to wait for Wall, and did not take the drink. Instead, he drew a food map for Wall, marking the specialties of different areas, hoping that she would take up searching for delicious foods as a new hobby. Then, with the herbs in hand, he returned to Hotel Del Luna. Perhaps this is why Wall developed a love for good food. As a reward for his mission, the deity informed him of Wall's safe return. An excited Chan hurried to the entrance of the underworld tunnel, where he indeed found Wall safely back. The five of them embraced, celebrating their reunion. After returning to the hotel from the tunnel, Wall and Chan shared their feelings of longing for each other, as well as the events that had occurred during their time apart. Wall had lost many memories due to lingering too long on the bridge of departure. Her memories of sending off Go had almost vanished, but she still remembered her beloved Chan. Now, having freed herself from the bonds of the Moon Tree, Wall's reincarnation was imminent. Before this, she wished to properly send off the hotel's three employees. At this time, the receptionist was trembling with fear, hiding in the courtyard. Everyone began discussing potential solutions, and through this, Chan learned of the receptionist's past. He had served the hotel for over 70 years and was born in a wealthy family in the capital. However, he encountered the chaos of war. While leading his blind sister to seek refuge with relatives, he came across his deserter friend, Tasik. The receptionist shared his food with him, but the desperate Tossic ordered the receptionist to swap clothes with him, arguing that as a deserter, he would be killed sooner or later otherwise. After the exchange, Tossic also stole the receptionist's luggage, which contained medicine for his sister. During their struggle, Tossic's gun went off accidentally, killing the receptionist. With his dying breath, the receptionist entrusted his sister to Tossic. From then on, Tossic took care of his sister, assuming the receptionist's identity, while the receptionist waited at Hotel Del Luna, hoping to leave with his sister. This was all discovered by Yuna, who loved the receptionist. To remove the receptionist's persistence, Yuna brought Tasik to Hotel Del Luna, leading to the scene of the receptionist hiding in the courtyard. To help the receptionist move on, Wall encouraged him to bravely confront Tasik. While everyone thought that his sister was the reason for the receptionist's persistence, only Wall knew that his true persistence was in fact Tasik, the man who killed him. However, Wall believed that trapping Tasik to suffer by his sister's side for 70 years was punishment enough. Every time Tossic saw the sister, he was haunted by the memory of killing her brother. Ultimately, after a fierce internal struggle, the receptionist decided to meet Tossic. He put on the old clothes Tossic had sent and had a meeting between the living and the ghost in a room. After the meeting, Wall and Tossic negotiated for him to buy the middle school they had both attended in their names and to ask the principal to issue a diploma for the receptionist, fulfilling his wish. Wall then attended the graduation ceremony with a crowd of ghosts to complete the receptionist's regrets. In her free time, Wall took an old camera out of the storeroom and treasuring it like a family heirloom, she shared with Chan the origins of the photos on the wall. This sparked an idea in Chan. He gathered everyone together and they joyfully took a heap of photos, creating cherished memories. However, they didn't anticipate that the group photo of five they hung on the wall would give Yuna a sense of crisis. She feared Wall's departure would separate her from the receptionist, so she stealthily went to the deity's pharmacy, stole the moon tree's magical drink, and gave it to Wool, hoping she could regain the tree's energy to preserve Hotel Del Luna. When Chan learned about this, he rushed to the rooftop to stop Wool. He didn't want her to drink the magical drink just to stay with him, nor did he want her to continue living an endless and meaningless life. Wall, who had long understood Chan's choice, poured the drink off the rooftop and expressed her love for him. The fate that binds people in this world is often inexplicable. Their encounter, acquaintance, and love were orchestrated by the deity, but it was also a connection planted in their past lives. More than 1,300 years ago, Wall had already met Chan. Back then, she was just a little girl whose parents died of starvation while fleeing famine, and Wall had fallen into a coma, barely clinging to life. It was the young Chan who saved her, telling her that her deceased parents had likely gone to the legendary Hotel Del Luna. Little did anyone expect 
expect that years later, Wall would become the owner of this hotel and reunite with Chan after 1,300 years. This millennium-spanning bond became the cure for Wool's love, and they both treasured the little time they had left together. Meanwhile, the time for the bartender to resolve his persistence approached. A novelist had used the bartender's past as inspiration for a novel about a lascivious scholar, which had already been sent to a publishing house. This hit a sore spot for the bartender who had passed the imperial examination as an older candidate, but died of depression before he could showcase his talents, causing him to linger in the hotel for over 500 years, waiting for the truth to clear his name. Upon learning of this, Wall immediately went to the publishing house, bought back the novelist's manuscript, and persuaded the novelist, the bartender, and another ghost writer from the hotel to rewrite the novel, vindicating and cleansing the bartender's name. With everyone's help, the bartender's persistence was untied, and he said his formal goodbyes to all, ready to report to the underworld. Before leaving, he specially mixed a cocktail of gratitude tears for Wall and left a thank you note. This moved the usually stoic Wall to tears. And so, the bartender became the first to depart from Hotel Del Luna. To keep Wall from being engulfed by sadness, Chan took her out for a date. As they chatted and laughed together, Wall once again brought out the medicine that could seal her ghostly vision. She knew that when she had sent Go to the afterlife, the housekeeper had given this very bottle to Chan, but he had refused to take it. Now, however, Wall hoped that after her departure, Chan would use it to seal his ghostly vision and live a normal life. But Chan gave a non-committal response. With the bartender's departure, the receptionist also awaited his sister. The housekeeper, knowing her time was short, visited the pregnant woman again. They discussed the baby, and the expectant mother expressed indifference to the child's gender, stating that in this era, the sex of the child was irrelevant, either would be the apple of a mother's eye. She planned to give her child her own surname, which led to an epiphany for the housekeeper, dissolving the resentment in her heart. The receptionist had to endure the pain of sending his beloved on her final journey. The last to leave was the housekeeper. The once bustling hotel was now quiet with only Wall left. Fortunately, she still had Chan by her side and they supported each other in the lonely hotel. To ensure Wall could leave without regrets, Chan asked the three deities to reverse time for them so that Wall could experience one last winter beneath the moon tree. The deities lovingly made it snow for them, and after this romantic encounter, Wall approached the time of her departure. At the entrance to the afterlife tunnel, she and Chan bid each other a tearful farewell. Despite the pain, they embraced and wept, but what was inevitable had to come. Wall eventually left Chan's embrace and walked into the afterlife, while Chan stood at the tunnel's entrance, watching her until she was out of sight. After Wall's departure, Chan resumed his bachelor life. In his spare time, he visited Yuna, who had taken the medicine to seal her ghostly vision, was living a normal life and had enrolled in university. He felt happy for Yuna, but remained silent when she inquired if he had taken his medicine. He simply told her that he was still upholding his promise to Wall. After saying goodbye to Yuna, Chan sat alone in the garden, reading a book among a group of playful people. He imagined he saw the bartender, the housekeeper, and the receptionist leading normal lives. He believed that his former companions were somewhere close by, living happily, and his beloved Wall, too, had crossed mountains and seas to return to his side, accompanying him in witnessing the beauty and happiness of the world. After all, the matchmaker deity had once let slip that the red thread of his and Wall's destiny was still intact. As long as the thread and affection remained, they would be together. In the end, the drama concludes with Hotel Del Luna welcoming its new owner. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.